Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The thief cometh not. Meaning you never see him in a place until there is need for this mission. The thief cometh not. Meaning he has no business coming to a place except to do this. To steal. And to kill. And to destroy. But Jesus, the son of the living God said, I am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The thief, Satan, there are many names that he's given in the Bible. He's given the serpent. He's given the dragon. He's given the thief. He's called the accuser of the brethren. He's called the adversary. He's called the destroyer. And Satan has a strategy. Please let me have your attention now. Satan has a strategy. There is a series by the grace of God on angels. That we are going to be teaching subsequently. And under that series of angels. I am going to be teaching us on the origin of angels. And we are going to examine this man or this entity called Satan. Praise the Lord. I want us to look very carefully in that series. There are a few things about Satan we cannot discuss it today but just a teaser. Do you know now many of you are going to be surprised but do you know that of all wicked spirits Satan is not the most dangerous. There are spirits today who are bound in everlasting chain. They were deliberately not released. Because the Bible says if they are released, even the elect will not stand. The question is, at what point were they bound? And what did they do? Hallelujah. When you begin to read, don't turn there, the book of Ezekiel 28. The Bible begins to speak of an ancient king. We don't have all that time to talk about the formation and the structure of angels look up many of us think and many of us have been taught that angels were created angels no no the word angel comes from the greek word angelio and it means a messenger let me tell you a few things look up please when ezekiel the prophet was shown this guy called lucifer the Bible begins to talk with him in a similitude of a mortal man that was a king over nations and over kingdoms. Is that true? Is, are, are you a believer? You believe the Bible? Is that true? It raises up a lamentation against a king that ruled over a place called Tyre and says, Thou which subdued nations talked about the making of Satan and then he said how that he ruled nations and territories inhabitants in the earth present at that time watch this let me just give you a quick analogy everyone look up this is an academic environment so let me attempt to communicate a few things I think it's important we get this look look at this imagine for instance that there was a student when our daddy prof was a student let's assume right that there was a notorious student at that point during the time of our daddy when he was in school are you getting that point and that notorious criminal had access to the senate please follow me a notorious criminal are you getting what i'm saying and because of that something happened at that time watch this 
that notorious criminal was banished as a student because of a rebellion that he wanted to have against the university and the vice chancellor are you getting me now because probably he was given the privilege of being an SUG president and so he had some level of dominance over the students are you following what I'm saying now on the strength of that he led a rebellion as at the time he did that daddy was a student are you getting what I'm saying now he is long graduated but that notorious Capone is still lingering around ABU are you getting what I'm saying now after so many decades a new set comes into that same abu are you getting my point point? and then you hear that people there is one notorious criminal that has been here this guy has been here for a long time are you getting what i'm saying he's an illegal occupant he's not a student but he has refused to leave that territory watch out for him he has an advantage of experience because he has watched many sets of students u61 u62 u60 whatever till now you are you or something and they are giving you an advice that you are not the first occupant of abu are you hearing what i'm saying that abu that's why when you measure it you find out that you are young but they tell you abu is 50 years whereas you are just four years are, are you getting my analogy is it making sense to you when he was the student he was not the most notorious student he was just the one that led a rebellion and it became history there are other notorious students cultists that were driven away are you getting what i'm saying but it so happens that this very notorious student is determined to frustrate the council and the agenda of the university now watch this let me tell you something I don't know if this is the right platform to begin to teach us, but we'll have that series by the grace of God. Did you know that angels were once mortal beings? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There was a dispensation that they reigned upon the earth. Their dispensation ended and the ones who are with Christ have been sent as messengers to help our dispensation. Just like, imagine that Jesus comes now. I hope you know when Jesus comes, our dispensation is ended. But the program of God still proceeds. We do not yet know for sure what are the other agendas. But we know the Bible tells us there is, a, there is an age to come. And there is a power that is left for that age to come and by reason of alignment we can taste of that power what age we do not know the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations so i guarantee you we will be the last of mankind as we know in this level of civilization but not the last as far as creation as far as as advancement as far as habitation and the humanoid species as we know who knows maybe in another dispensation we will be sent to other planets and galaxies according to the wisdom of god if allowed and we will be able to help the inhabitants to live out the purposes of god in that dispensation they will call us angels I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Now watch this. When we get to heaven, there will not the bible does not record the concept of marriage does not exist again in heaven is that true so if in the earth in my earth life for instance this was my wife these were our children when we get to heaven we all become brothers and sisters are you getting what i'm saying we all become brothers and sisters i can appear in another dispensation to help the inhabitants and they can look at me and say wow 
who is this strange being? But they do not know that there was a dispensation that you walk with human life. It is this aberration that was, that was cornered that brought what people call the mystery of reincarnation. This is what some of the fallen angels taught people and taught our forefathers and said, forget the people you are seeing now, they have been before. Listen, the dispensation before our own, there was a tremendous degree of power that was given to them. There was nothing called invisible and visible. That concept did not exist. Are you getting my point? The dispensations before us, you could access the heavens and access the earth. Now, it so happened that our dispensation disobeyed right from the beginning. So, Adam did not stay long for us to see the possibilities that were put in our dispensation. We never had the opportunity to see what we could do. For instance, there was no dispensation that recorded reproduction. They recorded rulership and they recorded who knows if Adam did not fall and Eve would have had the opportunity because he would still would have given birth. You understand? He would have given birth in his perfected state. We would have seen the son of Adam. A womb that has not been corrupted by the fallen nature. That's why in all of the dispensations it's only our dispensation that brought Jesus the son of the living God to come and die. Please, let's continue. That's for another time. I'm just trying to show you that the one you call Satan, Lucifer, he was once a king in a dispensation. Hmm. The king of Tyre that ruled upon nations. That's the reason why those spirits still walk upon kings today and try to make them build what used to be. Are you getting me now? Those spirits together with Satan were the brains behind the building of the Tower of Babel. They were attempting to bring back a dispensation to create a rebellion that once was. That was why Solomon in his wisdom said there is nothing on earth that is happening the first time. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Geography today, geography, they have found castles thousands of meters under the earth. They have found ancient castles. Did you know that there was a dispensation where, where we are standing now was water, not land? The same way that place, where is the Mount of Ararat, where the, the Ark of Noah rested, where is it in the earth today? We know Everest to be the highest. Where is Mount Ararat? Where are the golds? Where is the temple of Solomon that was built with pure gold? You mean everything disappeared that we cannot even find? dust of gold let me tell you most of them are still intact they are buried in the sea because the judgment that led the word darkness covering the earth is the hebrew word tohu wa bohu is the word that connotes darkness and confusion right in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that beginning we do not know but then we know that something happened and then the earth was dark and void formless it was the judgment are you getting me the water had to be judged and then it also had to cool the earth that was why there was a division two-thirds of the earth is covered with water and when you read revelations when one of the trumpets is blown one of the things that will be happened will happen to the earth is that there will be certain kinds of plagues and judgments. I'm saying all of this to let you know that Satan has a history. The strength of Satan is not his might because he's not the strongest of spirits. The strength of Satan is an advantage of a spiritual strategy backed up by an ancient wisdom of deceit.
Are we blessed? Very quickly. Keys to long life. The first thing I want you to know about the keys to long life is you do not choose one and leave the rest. They all complement themselves. You don't choose one key and then allow the rest to go. No. There are keys. There are keys. Number one, the first key to long life that the Bible reveals is speaking, choosing, releasing words of life. Psalm 34, verse 12 to 14. And then we'll look at Proverbs 18, verse 21. Psalms 34, 12 to 14, and then Proverbs 18, verse 1. The first key to long life is to speak it. The first key to long life is to choose it. The first key to long life is to release it. Hallelujah. Ready? Look up. Let's read Psalm 34 verse 12. One to read. What man is he that desireth what? Life. And loveth what? Many days that he may see good. Read on. Keep what? There is a relationship. Stop. Between your tongue, its communication, and your life. The Bible says, who is he that desire long life? It says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from what? Speaking guile. 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The emphasis is 12 and 13. Who is he, Koinonia, that desires long life? I don't die, yo. Oh. The Bible says, who is he that desires long life? Don't just laugh about what I'm saying. Because whether you think you are joking or not, the Bible says, and let it not be said before an angel, I made a mistake. Who is he that wants to activate longevity? It says, keep the... Please go to verse 13. 13, 13, 13. It says, keep thy tongue from what? And your lips keep your tongue. I know many of you have said, Kai, people are begged, they are exaggerating. Why do you want to speak? Please be real. You be real in the earth way, you will die like a chicken. Your reality must be the word. It says, I am the way. I am reality. I am absolute reality. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18, 21. Can we read Proverbs 18 verse 21? One to read. What will they eat? The fruit of what? No, 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 no. It's in your Bible. It says, They that love it shall do what? Death and life. This is Solomon, a man who received wisdom from God. He's teaching us from the abundance of the mysteries that he was granted access to. And he said, in my exploration of spiritual mysteries, I found something. Death and life are left in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit there. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? The Bible says, I set before you this day blessing and cursing. Is that true? Death and life. Here's my suggestion. I can't force you, but this is my suggestion. Choose life that you may live. Not wish it. Choose life. Koinonia. Choose life that you may live. Are you still a believer? Choose life that you may live. Choose life. I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you death and life. But this is my advice for you. Choose life. I speak life. Oh my.
my brother I speak life and another thing you will prevail I speak like don't give up the fight for your life hallelujah everybody say after me I choose life outside can you shout it I choose life those standing at the back, the back there, can you say, I choose life? Don't let the devil tell you, I hope you know what you're saying. Say it, I choose life. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Conquer fear, I choose life. When you speak, you release it. This is a voice activated planet. Nothing happens until sound is released. I choose life send it to the atmosphere i choose life send it ahead of your tomorrow i choose life the will of man cannot be compromised hallelujah listen jesus said behold i jesus the king of kings the creator of the ends of the earth i stand at the door of your heart and i keep knocking i cannot enter until your will permits me as mighty as jesus is he respects the will of man how much more satan jesus the son of the living god the resurrected christ the eternal one stands at the door of a man's heart and keeps knocking for 60 years if that man refuses he goes to hell but he was knocking so what do you think makes you think that satan just steps into your heart is called deception this is the foundation of witchcraft it paints a picture that is not real it makes you to buy into it and you authorize him to have wreck havoc in your life say it again i choose life say it again i choose life Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Key number two. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? And say, Lord, let this revelation just sink into me. If the devil brings the memories of your past loved ones, tell him, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I know they are in heaven. But right now I'm making my choice and my decision. Don't let the devil just bring any memory to put guilt and say, did they speak like that? Say, Satan, you are a liar. The Lord rebuke you. I choose life. Hallelujah. Are you blessed tonight? write very quickly everybody key number two to longevity the fear of the lord the fear of the lord biblical key number two to longevity under the word fear write reverence reverence the fear open bracket reverence of the lord proverbs chapter 10 verse 27 Proverbs 10 27. Proverbs 10 27. Everyone read. One, two, read. The fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence for God. Respect for Him. Honor for Him and his ways and what he represents prolongs days but the years of the wicked shall be shortened the bible says the fear of the lord there are two indexes given in the bible to measure the fear of the lord in a man's life number one obedience to his commands and number two service in the house of god obedience and service are two keys that demonstrate whether or not you fear the lord 
Obedience. Obedience. Oh, I love him. I obey him. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 to 11. I just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say I love you. You are everything to me and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy is understanding. Verse 11. For by me days shall be what? And the years of thy life shall be increased. And so the Lord spoke to Isaiah. He said go and tell Hezekiah you will not recover from that sickness. You will die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. And said, oh Lord, remember. How I have walked diligently before you. And the Lord sent Isaiah again. He said, uh -uh, uh -uh. I remember my faithfulness. And he went back and said, the Lord said, I have added. For by me, Joshua Selman's days shall be multiplied. And the years of his life shall be increased. Obedience and service. When we talk to people about obeying the principles of God, many people think that I can live my life the way I want. Longevity, brothers and sisters, hear me, don't let westernization deceive you. Longevity is tied to your fear of the Lord. Service. There are so many people seated here inside and outside. You're not serving in any unit. You're not contributing in any way to the advancement of the kingdom. I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's a scripture there. You will live to declare. You will live to promote. You will live to frontier his kingdom. Let me tell you this. My passion under the apostolic ministry is not just to produce miracles in people's lives. It's to create a sense. My passion is to institutionalize God consciousness in people. To make it an institution. That everything in your life, brothers and sisters, is secondary to the pursuit of his agenda. I don't care whether you have discovered your assignment or not. I can tell you an assignment. Start serving diligently in the house of God. Don't you let people fool you to think those who serve in the house of God are just weak people who are desperate for husband. Say, Kai, you serve. Eh? The way you are behaving, don't let anyone cheat you. There are people who live their lives as though you control your life by yourself hallelujah when five minutes without your breath you are gone it doesn't matter what your agenda is it's over the greatest part of a man's life is that part that is invested in serving god that's how you cheat death that's how you cheat the grave that's how you cheat death you don't cheat death by being afraid of it. You cheat death by serving God. Victorious in life and victorious in death. Paul says, for, for me to live is Christ. And if I die, it is still gain. There is no loss. Hallelujah. As you are sitting here, the Lord is speaking to you. You are living your life as young as you are. You think you are too busy. There are many of you outside. As you are looking at my face, the Lord Jesus is speaking to you tonight. I'm saying you are the one I'm sending this man of God to talk to. 
when will you begin to serve God with the active years of your life say I'm not a man of God I'm a pilot so what that my life be offered oh God on the altar of sacrifice that I will serve you I told God this is all I do with my life I don't have plan B when I wake up in the morning your kingdom come oh God that's all I do are you getting blessed service is one of your greatest respect that you can do for God I'll serve I'll serve I'll serve you Lord forever I'll serve I'll serve I'll serve you Lord forever I'll do my best I'll do my best with all my life I'll do my best for you I'll do my best I'll do my best I'll do my best for you sing it one more time from your heart I'll serve I'll serve I'll serve you Lord forever I'll serve I'll serve, I'll serve you, Lord. It's only a fool that will live his life hustling. I must make it. As though you hold the breath of your nostrils in your hands. You go to churches and see how many people warm the bench every week. And there is no sense of conviction in them to serve God. There, there's no service for the kingdom. It's not part of their lives. They come and they warm the bench. And smile around. And you tell them, are you serving? Any believer that is not serving in a church. Not serving in a group. Your seed is not going for the advancement of the kingdom. You don't deserve to live. He says, I shall not die but live. There is a way a man's life can frontier the kingdom. God will kill a nation to preserve that man. I travel all the time. Don't you think I don't know what I'm saying? Tomorrow we are on our way again to be there. All the time. I've seen all varieties of accidents. I've seen all kinds of things. I've seen all kinds of seeming threatening situations. We have met armed robbers. We were going to, um, when we were going to Obama shop, our flight was cancelled. We had to charter a car to take us by road. We left about 4.30 in the morning. Just coming out of Abuja, Abaji, going towards, just entering the route to go towards Kogi. And we saw somebody reversing. They were armed robbers. Brothers and sisters, this gentleman speaking to you, I'm not a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm educated. But I want to tell you something. The fear of the Lord can prolong the days of a man. That you spend your life serving God. During the days of our fathers, the popular song is, Lord, here am I. Send me. Right now we are saying, Lord, here am I. Give me. I have come. I finally arrived to collect. See, let me tell you, don't just laugh. If you keep that mentality and it becomes the circumference of your Christian experience, you will be unfruitful in the kingdom. I want to stand before my maker. I can only imagine what it would be like. Ah, what's the song? You know the song I'm trying to sing, right? Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. That on that day when I stand before him. 
when we are finally done and we have conquered the earth depopulated the kingdom of hell and brought, turned the hearts of many to righteousness that through faith after we have subdued kingdoms and wrought righteousness we will stand upon the mountain and salute creation and say Lord I am ready and you appear before him to be absent in the body the apostle says is to be present with the Lord and he looks at you and says well done you tried and they take on that crown and you see all the Matthias saying we watched you all the while while you were in that crusade we watched you while you refused to give up as you were casting out those devils the family in heaven was watching for some of us while you were roaming around gossiping and all that was your passion was oh god husband time is going god said we, we were watching you too i am a life that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came we were in your life a few weeks ago and when we went there the organizer of the the campus crusade when he met me i saw the way he was saluting me and i said i was wondering what was this for and he called me and he said sir about three years or thereabout when you came into this campus i was just a fresh student when i came in and when you preached i got born again I got filled with the Holy Spirit and today I'm still standing and doing many things. Every time people call and say koinonia messages are changing people, I say, Lord, thank you. I have no business being known. They don't need to know me that I may decrease. That my face cannot heal anybody. My picture cannot bless anybody. There is one mightier than I. He's the one I live and I spend my entire life serving. Please, I speak to you as a servant of God tonight, think about your life. Think seriously about your life. And the way you are ignoring the things of God, as though there is something better. I'm not saying be a pastor. Be an addict enough. When was the last time your money entered the advancement of the gospel? How many souls can stand before God and say it was your giving that brought the men of God to this place? How many of you can say it was your prayer? You were interceding for every man of God. Not snoring around and complaining. How many of you have sacrificed your night time for the sake of the kingdom? How many of you have sacrificed your food for the kingdom? The fear of the Lord. Let me tell you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. I have stood before kings. I have stood before millionaires. I know what honor sounds. I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold. Impossible. I wouldn't trade you for riches untold. You are, you are my. There is nothing in this life that will attract me enough to stop what I'm doing. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. The psalmist said, better is one day. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'm so desperate to serve you. Although I'm a king, I choose to be an usher, a sanctuary keeper, than a celebrity somewhere. These were men who understood God. They understood the ways. There are some of you here, you think you are too big to join the protocol. You are too big to do this. You see all the people sacrificing and you think they are fools. Unfortunately, most preachers have preached service, not as a proof of love for God, but as a way to get things from God. It is true that if they obey and serve him, there are benefits. But brothers and sisters, hear me. Beyond getting things, it is a proof of love. So if your work is to bring this water, you bring it with all sense of honor. Not just like you are worshipping a man. Oh, it's a privilege to serve in the house of God. It's a privilege. If you are to clean the chairs, you are cleaning the chairs and say, Lord, it's a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege you can do without me. You have chosen to do with me. You are supposed to bake the cake. You are seated and you know you have grace. 
you say no i need to join the welfare department i must spend my life i, I need to contribute you are excellent in graphic oh the media needs me service 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 whether you are in zaria or not find a church find a group find a fellowship find a, a congregation of believers many of us are looking for geo and mama that's the only condition you have given god to serve him lord i will serve you if i will be the mama of the ministry i will serve you if you give me the name of my parish the name of your parish is nothing let it be your passion hallelujah are we getting blessed i'm preaching from the depth and the core of my spirit because i don't want you to waste your time please get back into the mystery of kingdom service get back you spend your time serving a guy because you love him you go to his house you wash his clothes you cook you iron and he says is it not too much you say this is the least i can do for you is it to express my love i'm i'm, I'm not embarrassed call me a fool it's true eh? if loving you is a crime let me be a criminal look at what you are saying look at what you are saying shame on any believer who is saying that i'm telling you i say it again shame on any believer that because of mundane things you can so serve a man and your passion cannot go for God. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Skapaka prondo sokro silia paharatu sufratia. Proverbs chapter 3. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments verse 2 for length of days obedience length of days and long life together with peace shall they add to thee commandment he that loveth me is he that keeps my commands john 14 21 he that keepeth my commands is he that loveth me and i will love him and my father will love him and we will come and manifest ourselves to him the commands of God. His commandments are not burdensome, brothers and sisters. Let's hurry up. Key number three to long life. Engaging the mystery of the blood. Key number three, let's hurry up. Engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding. engaging the mystery of the blood with understanding there are three ways that the mystery of the blood was used in scripture to bring preservation and deliverance number one in the book of exodus chapter 12 it was used to anoint the doorposts and the lintels so that the angel of death would not come and destroy the people. Hallelujah. Number two, Jesus revealed it to us in the communion. The communion. In the New Testament, he began to teach us the mystery of the communion. And then number three, the mystery of what the Bible calls blood sprinkling. That the priest would take a portion and a sample of the blood and sprinkle upon the people and it will mark them. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 24 to 30. We may not have time to read all but let's see how far we can go. Help us media. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 24 to 30. Paul is teaching the church in Corinth the mystery of the blood with respect to communion and when he had given thanks he break it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me next verse he says after the same manner he took the cup here and there 25 26 for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye show the lord's death till he comes 27 wherefore whosoever now listen shall eat this bread and drink this cup unworthily 
open your eyes i want to show you a mystery unworthily it says this sacrament there are two sacraments that jesus left to the church one is the sacrament of the communion the second is the sacrament of baptism water baptism two of them are still valid they are important today it says whosoever shall take up the cup of the lord unworthily shall be guilty of what the body and the blood of the lord here comes the mystery 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup 29 for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily does what he can eat and drink unto damnation because he did not discern that the body and bread of jesus christ relieves life and because he's, he's eating it unworthily he will get the opposite of it next verse 30 read please one two read stop for what cause for the cause of partaking in the communion without discernment for this cause how many people how many how many people do you know have died today that they told you it was a communion that killed them have you ever had any death and they told you that ah this death it was communion that killed the man have, is it in your bible for this cause did he say few many many are weak for this cause, the cause of not discerning the Lord's body, the cause of not respecting it, for this cause of not giving it the honor, it says many are weak. You believe the Bible, right? Many are what? Sick. And many sleep. Wow. For this cause, trivializing the body of Christ, not discerning the power it can release not discerning that this represents the body of jesus beaten battered by whose stripes we are healed it says for this cause that means when you take it with understanding and you take it worthily for that cause you will be strong you will be healthy and you will live you will be strong you will be healthy and you will leave. Exodus chapter 12. From verse 7 to 8. The mystery of the blood. And then 12 to 13. We are not going here. We don't have the time. We have to move on to other things. I'm just giving you references. Exodus chapter 12. 7 to 8. And then 12 to 13. And also verse 23. These are all scriptures that show how the blood upon the lintel and the doorpost when the angel of death, the Bible calls it the destroyer. That when the destroyer comes and he sees that blood upon your lintel, it will leave and trouble you not. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Key number four, honor to parents. Key number four, Let's be fast, please. Honor to parents. Open bracket, both physical and spiritual. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 2 to 3. Honor to parents. Both physical and spiritual are mystery keys to long life. One to read is projected. One to read. Honor thy father and thy mother which is the first commandment with a promise verse 3 what's the blessing that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long where it told you you will live long and it told you the location where you will live long for honoring parents how many of us have dishonored our parents yes they are foolish yes they've acted stupidly yes they may have behaved in a way but do you honor them some of us beat up our parents some of us beat up daddy and mommy. We think I'm a big boy, I'm a big girl, I'm now married, I have children, I'm driving a jeep. Let no level of madness ever get into you that you will insult your father, curse your father or your mother. Let me show you this. Proverbs 20, 20. A grave consequence follow those who can curse and dishonor their fathers. 
Read it, please. One to read. His lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Whosoever can dare to curse the father and the mother that brought him to the earth. Now, get this. I'm not saying that they lead you to partition. So, as for as long as what they are doing is not leading you to death and leading you outside of salvation, no matter what it is. Look at me. David twice had the opportunity to kill Saul. Is that true? Are you Bible students? David had the opportunity to kill Saul. He caught his robe and went away with it. He said, I will not be the one to kill God's anointed. How many times have people run their mouths talking about men of God? You sit down where you are and you are just lambasting men of God, just talking and smiling. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother, whether spiritual or physical. He said, they that rule well among you deserve double honor. Honor them that rule well when they have proven a life of integrity, not human worship, not fear, but a sense of honor and respect. I honor my parents in life and in death. Hallelujah. Some of you have elderly people come around. You can see an elderly person standing in a meeting in your house and you just cross your leg and you are just balancing and smiling and say, you came late, please. I don't want anything to inconvenience me. You are there shaking your wivon up and down. Instead of you to stand up and say, Mama, please, you can sit down. And she say, no, 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 my daughter, insist. Insist. Say, Mama, sit down. It's not about being a virtuous woman. It's about life and death. Life and death. It's in your Bible. I'm not the one saying it. It's in your Bible. Say, I choose to honor my father and my mother. How many of you pray for your men of God? How many of you pray for ministers? You stand there criticizing and shouting when you hear that a minister has a scandal. Instead of you to get to the place of prayer, you stand there saying, I always knew. I always suspected. The way I've been looking at that man. You see that? Continue. The Bible says, He that cursed his father and his mother, his lamp, his life will be taken away to obscure darkness. How many have died as a result of dishonor? When a father fights his son, he loses his honor. When a son fights his father, spiritual or physical, he loses his life. That's why many people, sadly to say, many people who just break out foolishly because they want to start their churches or ministries, break out and jeopardize the life of the Jew, thinking God called them. Notice, very few of them ever last. Because he that dishonored his father, his lamb will be taken. Are we learning? Number what now? Number five. Walking in wisdom. The fifth key to long life. Walking in wisdom. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 to 3 verse 13 to 16. Those outside, if you are still with us, say amen. God bless you. Alright, Proverbs 3 verse 13 to 16. Walking in wisdom. Walking in wisdom. Foolishness can take a man's life. Foolishness can cut short a man's life. Walking in wisdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says, happy is the man that what? Finds wisdom. That means you have to look for it. And the man that get it understanding. 14. For the merchandise of it are better than silver. And the gain thereof than fine gold. 15. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared with her. 16. Length of days are in her right hand. And in her left hand riches and honor. If you embrace wisdom. It will also open you up to long life. Look at me. How many people do you know who cannot drive? Hello? They cannot drive. And then they go and carry a truck and kick it. Because they are trying to impress their colleagues. Are you seeing how foolishness costs the life of people? And then they go to the road. They have given the spirit of death unrestrained access. 
How many people drive their cars? Foil is leaking down. Are you getting what I'm saying? Foil is leaking and they don't care. There are people who, who transfer is a gallon that is in their car or their bus. They connect it directly to the carburetor and from the, from the foil is feeding the vehicle and they are there running. They are smiling. How many people you look at the tire of the car and you are already seeing the metal. The tire is so it is. It, the man is driving and holding the steering this way for the car to be straight. That's the degree to which the car is disaligned. And yet he plans to travel to Lagos. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. Are we blessed? A man takes beer, alcohol, and tells you, can I give you a ride? You say, really? You get into the car. Wisdom. You have trusted your life to a foolish man. Are we getting blessed, please? How many things do people do? Go to many homes now and see the risky connections that they do in their homes. Directly under your bed is one wire that has been there two years. Naked wire. How many people dry their clothes on naked wires? Or at least part of it is beginning to cut. Life wire. They dry their clothes and smile. They have been doing it. I, I know how to do it. No, no, no. I'm showing you how people partner with the spirit of death to cut short their lives. You plug iron and you just reduce it and then you are watching film and you are enraptured in the movie. There are many of us, the way you own your car, there is something only you know how to touch. You touch the wires and then something down. You just touch it and it sparks. Cas, cas, and then the thing starts. You've been doing it for many years. Preserved by mercy. You think you are wise. God is speaking to you tonight. How many people drive cars with the exhaust on the ground? Sparking. You will see it sparking. And there is foil directly under. Yet we went to school. Is God teaching us wisdom? There are people where you keep the room where people sleep is also where you keep foil. You buy one jerry can of foil and keep it closed. There are babies there. There are all kinds of things. People are inhaling it. There are others you never eat well. I'm showing you how people partner with Satan to destroy their lives. You never eat well. There's no difference from the day God, you were in poverty and now that God is even helping you. There is no difference. Look at mechanics. Look at what they eat. Same thing. One lady comes with, 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 with a lele or something and serves them. That's what they eat every day, every night. They take tea in the night. See, that kind of unhealthy, that's why the life expectancy level of Africa is about, is it 30 or 40? scientifically proven we're, we're not talking of demons here we're just talking of carelessness say carelessness yes yes people do all kinds of things risky things and we think there is no problem to it very risky things it's only god that can tell the kind of risks people take every day every day there's food on fire. You made yam. The water is boiling. You want to use your hand to carry it out. Can't you look for a spoon? If the spoon is missing, can't you be patient? Why must you cut you? You came complete. Why must you go back with one hand? Yes, you will make heaven, but is that a rich life? Is that a rich life? Why will you cut short your life? Because of carelessness. It's God speaking to us. Number six, the sixth key to longevity is to take authority over the spirit of death, infirmity, and destruction. We're getting deeper now. We're getting to the area where we're going to pray. Luke 10, verse 19. Death is a spirit, brothers and sisters. I've taught you this. Behold! See, don't be ignorant. I give you 
power to tread upon serpents upon scorpions and over how many how many all the powers of the enemy it says and nothing shall by any means harm you i have given you if you take advantage of it and you use it appropriately he said with wise counsel make war with wise counsel make war i have given it to you death is a spirit infirmity is a spirit destruction is a spirit the spirit does not just work by default when the spirit of death is in an environment, what happens is it waits and finds people that partner with its activity. This is the standard operation. There are a few exemptions, however, but the standard way the spirit of death, the spirit of death is like a lion waiting for a prey. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Let's take 10 minutes and discuss something that will be very serious under this topic. A subtopic under point six, the reality of witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. May I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, if you are yet to believe that witchcraft is real. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If anyone has deceived you into the illusion that you are living in a world where there is no witchcraft. I just gave you a teaser with wicked spirits please listen to what i'm saying because it's very important the reality of witchcraft deuteronomy 18 from verse 10 to 12 let's hurry up let's just write the scriptures media copy them down and then you give it to us nahum chapter 3 verse 4 ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17 to 23 proverbs 1 11 and then psalms 10 verse 8 there are many more but we'll just stop here Give us Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. Let's hurry up. Everyone read. Want to read. There shall be not found among you anyone that make his son or his daughter to do what? Pass through fire. Or that uses divination. Or an observer of times. An enchanter. Or a witch. Next verse. Or a charmer. Or a consulter with familiar spirits. Or a wizard. Or a necromancer. Next verse. For all that do these things. Are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations. The Lord thy God. doth drive them out before thee. God himself identifies. That there is a dark side. To our world. There are enchanters. There are stargazers. There are men that manipulate the constellation. Against the destinies of men. The church has been so ignorant or we have exaggerated the reality and the existence of satan nahum chapter 3 verse 4 just look up so that um since it's projected one to read because of the multitude of the wardoms of the well-favored harlot the what mistress of witchcraft that sell what look at what she sells she can see look at her goods the way you sell pure water the mistress of witchcraft and say you can come and meet me and i will give you africa i can give you this village i can sell that soul to you it's in your bible it says she sells what nations through her wardom her fraternity with human beings that means human agents come to meet her I want access to a territory. And what does she sell again? Families. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? That there are witchcraft activities that sell families. Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Ezekiel 13, 17 to 23. It's a long reading. Let's rush. Are you still with me? All right, let's hurry up to 23. Likewise, son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. Lord God, woe to the women 
that sew pillows to all armholes and make what handkerchiefs what version is this okay it's okay upon the head of every stature hey let me show you what the bible is saying where's my handkerchief they sew pillows and they carry handkerchiefs and drop it on the head of statues to do what to do what to hunt souls as a way of invoking the spirits of men they take on a handkerchief put it on a statue and call your name it's in your bible they have not taught you because many preachers have lied to you that is a nice word for as long as you just say god i'm here and i love you everything is all right welcome to planet earth that has strangers that are here before our arrival they hunt souls he said will ye hunt the souls of my people they are hunting they are everywhere let me tell you especially for africa please don't pretend like you are coming from the caribbeans you were born an african you belong to an african family and you must be ready to confront our children by the grace of god will not need to go through this but for now we must pay that price are you there will ye save the souls alive that come unto you next verse let's look at it quickly and will ye people oh and will ye what me among the people for handful of barley and for pieces of bread to slay what read that part to slay the souls that should not die to slay souls that should not die and to do what to save the souls that are alive the mystery of spiritual exchange that a man will see that his time is here because the wicked shall be cut short and he will say in my place i invoke this and i donate this person die in my stead it was an ancient practice that king used when they were about to kill them they killed their children and an indignation rose and the war ended it's still being practiced today men who give others for their lives i prophesy to you any man that invokes your name on any altar as surely as the lord god of israel lives they will carry their dead body from that altar i say it again in the name of the lord jesus that any charm any altar that invokes your name to die the death of another may my god visit them with judgment next next verse lord god behold i am against your pillows wherewith ye were there to hunt the souls to make them fly watch this look at the mystery of witchcraft and i will tear them from your arms and will let the souls go even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly when verse what now two verses left your handkerchiefs I will also tear your instruments of divination those those mediums that you use in covens that you flip and call the names of people and somebody's walking peacefully on the street all of a sudden somebody comes with a knife and kills him and they say he just died no sir he did not just die an invocation happening in the realm of the spirit And deliver my people out of your hand and they shall be no more in your hand to be haunted say amen. amen and they shall know that I am the Lord your God let's read 22 because I can't read all those ones whom I have not made sad listen and strengthen the hands of the wicked that you should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life look at this guys the summary is that this is a transaction of life and death happening in the underworld whereas there are human beings moving you are minding your business they are discussing business with your life i prophesy to you again oh lord god of israel i speak that anyone under the sound of my voice that is being manipulated by stargazers that is being manipulated by necromancers they who manipulate the constellations i declare in the name of jesus christ may those ovens catch fire may those covens tonight catch fire may those covens catch fire
Proverbs 1 verse 11. Proverbs 1 verse 11. Shabarato Totobaya. Watch this. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for what? Let us do what? Let us wait for blood. Let us lock privately for the innocent without cause. Meaning they did not do anything, but we desire their blood. So we are waiting. Let's wait for the day that they want to take a step. Let's wait for when the woman takes in and then we will visit. Ah. The whole world lieth in wickedness. If you are yet to be aware, be aware this night. Write the following scriptures down. We may not have time to read them, but this is the lot of the wicked. This is what God will do with wicked people. Okay, let's look at one of them. Micah chapter 5 verse 12. But one other scripture you will write. This is the lot of witchcraft. Psalms 109 verse 17 to 18. Just write that. We won't read it. Let's read Micah chapter 5 verse 12. When the Lord opened my eyes to this scripture, I was amazed. One to read and shout amen after you read it. One to read. He said i will cut off witchcraft i will cut it off because if i don't cut it off they will cut short your life so i will cut it off is god helping us but i mean number seven quickly there are eight points i'm giving you seven activating the ministry of angels the seventh key to long life activating the ministry of angels hebrews 1 14 activating the ministry of angels angels are real they are real i have seen them i see them all the time angels are very very real are they not all ministering spirits meaning you cannot see them in the physical except god opens your eyes or he gives them a, a material body to appear before you sent forth to do what to minister to those who shall be the heirs of salvation are you an heir of salvation are you a partaker of salvation there are angels allocated to you but they never act until you activate their ministry they never act until you activate their ministry until you activate their ministry and you activate their ministry in the place of prayer you activate their ministry through words you release angels you release angels you activate their ministry angels are real and they help believers we'll look at a few scriptures they protect they preserve and they contend with wicked spirits part of the assignment of angels with respect to spiritual warfare and preservation of the saints because God knows that alone we cannot make it. There is an advantage that wicked spirits have. They have advantage of the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom. And so he gave us angels. Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 to 14. Don't turn there. Just write it. Joshua 5 verse 13 to 14. Joshua has an, an encounter with an angel. Project for us. Project for us 2 Kings 19 verse 35. 2 Kings 19 verse 35. While she's doing that, in the book of Daniel chapter 10, when you read from verse 13, the Bible says that Archangel Michael contended with the prince of Persia. He was trying to stop him from coming down to destroy Daniel. But Daniel was activating the ministry of that angel in the place of prayer. When we pray, we activate angels when we speak we activate angels second kings you can see the angels standing to fight warfare for men read and it came to pass that night that the angel of the lord went out and smote in the camp of the assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand and when they rose up early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. One angel. Imagine how powerful they are. About 185,000 people killed by one angel in one night. 
when you activate them Jude chapter 1 verse 9 the Bible tells us that when Satan came to carry the body of Moses Satan wanted to come and carry the body of Moses and Michael the archangel again he came to contend with Satan so angels fight to preserve our bodies they fight to preserve our lives preserve our bodies preserve our destinies Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 Psalm 91 verse 11 and 12 read verse 11 one to read for he shall give what his angels charge over thee hallelujah to keep thee in all thy ways verse 12 and they shall bear thee up on their hands lest thou dash thy foot against the stone hallelujah the key to activating them is found in psalms 103 verse 20. psalm 103 verse 20. please begin to prepare the oil there's there's an anointing service that will happen here shortly very quickly quickly bring the oil for me please don't open it yet just bring it these are the instructions that the lord gave me psalms 103 verse 20. go ahead and read one to read bless the lord ye his angels that excel in strength that do what his commandment how do they walk hearkening they walk at the instance of his word they walk at the instance of his word as you pray and declare the word you activate them you activate them you activate them as you speak God's word the moment they hearken to the word they start walking until a word is spoken the angels are not activated the moment they hearken to the word they start moving hallelujah these are eight keys that the Lord revealed to me in my place of retreat. And he said, teach my people. These are the keys to long life. These are the keys to long life. You can live long. And the Lord gave me an instruction. He said, according to the mystery of the blood, and the mystery of the oil anoint my people i don't do foolish things give me the oil i'm not one of those men of god that just does things impulsively and the lord gave me an instruction he said when i was done with that retreat i should come back and based on two scriptures the lord gave me isaiah 10 27 something will happen in this place tonight Mande brando she bros satalan de cras cobrash tilaba. She bros setete baladabaya. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder. It shall come to pass that those spells of enchanters and stargazers and they that hunt your soul unto death, it shall come to pass that by a mystery as revealed of the Lord of Sabaoth the avenger of men that it shall come to pass that at the instance of his word that it shall be taken from off your shoulder and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing because of the anointing there are charms that must be broken because of the anointing there are people sentenced to death sentenced to accident sentenced to untimely death by the mystery by the mystery of the oil the second scripture exodus chapter 12 please please everyone turn there i sense the anointing of the spirit very strongly right now please turn there this is the instruction that the lord gave me make sure everyone is participating right now no matter how far 
those following us online they can get oil if, if they have access to verse 7 please verse 7 and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it says they shall take the blood and put it on the lintel go to verse 12 for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute vengeance I am the Lord this is what the Lord told me in the secret place he said I'm arising as a mighty man the blood of the innocent Christ before me that's what the Lord told me and the Lord said a destroyer is going to move across the nations and the Lord told me vengeance there will be vengeance upon witchcraft I had the Lord and he revealed this to me my eyes was open in the spirit and I saw like a cloud moving across territories and the Lord told me by the mystery of preservation you preserve my people that's why I'm carrying this oil is serving both as oil and spiritually as the mystery of the blood rise up on your feet and begin to blast in tongues thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her yea the set time Inside and outside, pray. Zakata ta 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 ta. Bram bata patesh. Rekete tekete. Robotos koto pekete. Lekete prosopatia. Hallelujah. Can we have the plates, please, very quickly? Lift your voice and say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on, say it like a believer. In the name of Jesus every power of witchcraft manipulating my life and my destiny by the mystery of the blood i command judgment upon you lift your voice and pray i shall not die but leave to declare pray sento to to te te broto skete pa ma to so to le ke te e prosko to in the name of Jesus every power that wants to cut short my life and exchange my life for someone else's own in the name of Jesus I come against you lift your voice and speak stargazers necromancers those that tread the souls of men they cut short destinies through act Hallelujah. 
hallelujah the last prayer point say in the name of jesus i declare the seal of the blood over my life my loved ones my going out my coming in no accident shall take my life no terrorist shall take my life no sickness shall take my life i am secured in christ lift your voice and pray pray for yourself pray for your loved ones no death no death no death the destroyer cannot plague my life the destroyer cannot plague my family the destroyer cannot plague my destiny my going out preserve coming in preserve by the blood by the blood You are looking at this olive oil but this is no ordinary oil the lord instructed me to pray through the night over this oil and release the power of preservation that it becomes the mystery of the blood in the spirit and that's exactly what i've done and lord i lift this in the name of jesus i come under this apostolic office in the name of the lord jesus and i declare that over this territory of zaria over koinonia over our families the plague of death will not find expression it will not cut short the lives of people in the name of jesus christ father let this oil lose its earthly significance and take on a heavenly significance in the name of jesus let the terrestrial become celestial let the earthly become heavenly and lord let this carry preservation power in the name of jesus now watch this we're going to do it very orderly and very fast i prayed for this i will anoint the heads of department um two of them will go outside they will just be in front your job is to walk orderly i'm sure they'll coordinate them just take a portion put it on your head and come back and blast in tongues begin to blast preservation begin to speak and release life to yourself hallelujah go ahead and begin to pray hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.